Hello, welcome back, my name's Andy. So, in my previous forging video, we made a toasting fork. Now, barbecue season is fast approaching, and what I'd like to do is make a bottle opener to go with that. Now, in order to make a bottle opener, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a couple of punches, and we're going to need a couple of drips. So, we're going to make that into a series. We're going to make the punches and the drips, and then we're going to make the bottle opener. So, let's get cracking. Okay guys, I've cut off half a ring of coil spring. Now what we'll do, stick it in the fire, straighten it out, and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm just gonna fly through the process of straightening it out. I don't really care how you straighten it. You can do it on the anvil, or if you've got a uh, bending fork, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Get it straight, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's crack on. And as always guys, safety first, eyes and ears. Okay guys, so I've straightened out the coil. As I say, it doesn't really matter how you do this. I would happen to use a bending fork, because that's what I've got. If you don't have one of them, you can stick it in the hardy hole itself, or even the Pritchell hole. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, let's crack on. So, this turns out to be actually 10 inches long as opposed to 8 inches, which is, is going to be a little bit too much. Um, so, We'll forge the business end first, and then we'll come back, cut the excess off, then I'll forge the striking end, as you've seen me done in previous videos. Uh, I'll go over that again anyway, just in case. And then we'll, um, that'll be it. So, we're going to forge this down to a square taper. We're going to go for approximately a quarter inch round at the end. Then we'll come in, take off the corners, the corners? We'll take off the corners to make an octagon and then we'll go for 16 sides and so on and so forth until it's round and then we'll clean it all up. Okay, let's get cracking. Far side of the angle, forge a square taper. Okay, so we've forged the square taper. Now what we'll do, we'll come in, take off the corners on the edges, then to make an octagon, then we'll go in, make 16 sides, and so on and so forth. We'll start rounding that up, give it a good clean. So as you can see, we've rounded it all off, taken off all the corners. It's about as smooth as we're going to get it. The tip is... just shy of a quarter of an inch. It's no big deal because it's still quite rough on the end, so we're going to cut that off and clean it up with a belt sander or something like that. Uh, you could do it on a flap disc, that would be absolutely fine as well. So, 
when we actually get to punching the material, chances are that it's only ever going to be quite thin and you're never really going to use much more than, what, half an inch of this. So we'll try and focus our cleaning efforts on the, on the grinder or the flat disc or whatever you happen to be using on this front part here. Now, when you, if you've got a belt grinder, when you grind, if you can try and orientate the grinder motion in that direction so that all the scratches and any marks come, uh, what do you call it, I don't know, going that way. So rather than going across the actual punch because that will reduce the amount of friction. Probably not noticeably, but every little helps, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'll let this whole thing cool down and then I will cut off approximately two inches with the uh, angle grinder and a cutting disc and then we'll come back and we'll forge the struck end of the punch. So, let's crack on. Okay, so I've cut a little bit off the end. I've cut it down to nine inches just because I wanted it a little bit longer than my previous punch that I was using. So now what we'll do, we'll come to the end, we'll forge the struck end. So we'll come to the far side of the anvil, forge a square taper as per usual, take off the corners, clean it up slightly, and then that will be the struck end. So if this was a directional punch, we would come in and forge a slight divot on either side of the punch, just so that we've got something to hold to line up with whatever the tip is. So you forge a little divot like that, just so you know, which way the punch is facing. That's not my idea, that's a Mark Asprey thing. You can see that in his books. Uh, I think it's a really good idea, which is why I do it on all of my directional punches. Um, as I say, this isn't a directional punch, it's a round punch, so no matter which way you turn it, it's always gonna be round. So I'm not gonna bother doing that this time. So, let's get cracking. So we'll clean up that slight fish slip on the angle grinder with the flat disc, then we'll clean up the punch end, the business end, and we'll move into the heat treatment. Okay guys, that's the, uh, that's the heat treatment done. I've just heated it up to a nice cherry red, pulled out the fire and let it cool down to, uh, you know, to be able to touch it. So, um, it is effectively annealing the steel. Now, you don't need to heat treat a punch like this that's made from spring steel that's gonna be used purely for hot punching because there is enough toughness in this steel at this state to be able to punch hot steel and not be affected by it. If you were to heat treat this and harden it up, you'd be able to do, um, for example, if you made that into a center punch, you'd be able to do cold steel. We're not gonna be punching anything cold with this, so it's purely for hot work in this state is absolutely fine. So let's uh, give it a bit of a polish up and then we'll uh, see if it works. Okay, so there we go, that'll do. Um, in an ideal world, probably polish that up, make it nice and smooth so it's be uh, as frictionless as possible as you, as you punch the hole, but I don't have a polisher or anything to polish it with, so that'll have to do. Right, let's see if it works.
Okay, let's do a punching holes 101. So, I found my dial hole, which is quite handy. Um, it's one of those projects that I started a while ago and haven't really finished. I need a couple of bigger holes here, but they provide a bit more support than the rather large Pritchell hole I have. So, all this is is a piece of plate. Uh, it's 10 mil thick with a little spike on the end, uh, just to kind of stop it wobbling around too much. And I've drilled a series of increasingly larger holes all the way around, or more or less all the way around. Uh, again, this is not something that I come up with. This was a Brian Brazil thing, I think. Um, so yeah, so let's punch a hole. Okay. Find where you want to punch the hole, give it a tap. Make sure you're where you need to be. Give it another tap. I don't know if you can hear that difference, that's where it struck the anvil, you're all the way through. And then spin it over, clean that up with a tap. Re establish your shine mark, spin it over. Yeah. You've got a dark spot just here, that's where the uh, thin part of the plug will be. Line up your punch on there. Give it a tap. Move to your uh, dial hole or your pritchel if you haven't got it. Line that up. Drive it through. And there we go. Nice clean punched hole. Okay, let's go through that once more. So, take your punch, line it up where you want the hole to be, tap just to make sure you know where you are and uh, it's where the hole needs to be. Give it another good strike. Hit until you're through to the angle, spin it over, clean it up. Spin it back to the original side so you can re-establish the shine mark. Strike. There you go, so you can see the, sh the shine mark. And we'll, uh, we're a little bit cold here, but... Line up your punch over the shine. Tap. Move to your dial hole or your pretzel or whatever you're using. And drive the punch through. go. And then drop your uh, punch for dramatic effect. There's the two plugs. <laughs> Cheers guys! <clears throat> so there you go! You'll have to uh, excuse the background noise in the workshop, it's very busy in here today. So that is how to make a very simple round punch from coil spring. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have please give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. Do you use something different for your punches, use a slightly different technique, let me know, that'd be cool. Now, as ever, you should follow me on social media if you don't already. I am on Facebook and Instagram. I'll put links below. And I'll also put a link here-ish to the barbecue fork video that I did a couple of weeks ago now. If you haven't already, you should subscribe. I'll put a link up here. That'd be great. And uh, make sure you click the little bell so you get notifications of when I post up videos. I'm trying to do them every Saturday at 7 p.m. UK time. I have no idea what that is in US time. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard? I don't know. Anyway, so subscribe, leave a comment, a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.